English Fairy Tales, Collected by Joseph Jacobs. Chapter 33 The Laidly Worm of Spindleston Hugh. In Bamborough Castle once lived a king who had a fair wife and two children, a son named Child Wind and a daughter named Margaret. Child Wind went forth to seek his fortune, and soon after he had gone, the queen, his mother, died. The king mourned her long and faithfully, but one day while he was hunting, he came across a lady of great beauty, and became so much in love with her that he determined to marry her. So he sent word home that he was going to bring a new queen to Bamborough Castle. Princess Margaret was not very glad to hear of her mother's place being taken, but she did not repine, but did her father's bidding, and at the appointed day came down to the castle gate with the keys all ready to hand over to her stepmother. Soon the procession drew near, and the new queen came towards Princess Margaret, who bowed low and handed her the keys of the castle. She stood there with blushing cheeks and eye on ground, and said, O oh, welcome, father dear, to your halls and bowers, and welcome to you, my new mother, for all that's here is yours. And again she offered the keys. One of the king's knights who had escorted the queen cried out in admiration, Surely this northern princess is the loveliest of her kind. At that the new queen flushed up and cried out, At least your courtesy might have accepted me. And then she muttered below her breath, I'll soon put an end to her beauty. That same night the queen, who was a noted witch, stole down to a lonely dungeon, wherein she did her magic with spells three times three, and with parcels nine times nine, she cast Princess Margaret under her spell. And this was her spell. I read ye to be a laidly worm, and borrowed shall ye never be, until child wind the king's own son, come to the hue and thrice kiss thee, until the world comes to an end, borrowed shall ye never be. So Lady Margaret went to bed a beauteous maiden, and rose up a laidly worm. And when her maidens came in to dress her in the morning, they found coiled up on the bed a dreadful dragon, which uncoiled itself and came towards them. But they ran away shrieking, and the laidly worm crawled and crept, and crept and quarrelled, till it reached the hue or rock of the spindle stone, round which it coiled itself, and lay there basking with its terrible snout in the air. Soon the country round about had reason to know of the laidly worm of Spindleston Hugh. For hunger drove the monster out from its cave, and it used to devour everything it could come across. So at last they went to a mighty warlock, and asked him what they should do. Then he consulted his works and his familiar, and told them, The laidly worm is really the Princess Margaret, and it is hunger that drives her forth to do such deeds. Put aside for her seven kine, and each day as the sun goes down, carry every drop of milk they yield to the stone trough at the foot of the hue, and the laidly worm will trouble the country no longer. But if you would that she be borrowed to her natural shape, and that she who bespelled her be rightly punished, send over the seas for her brother, child wind. All was done as the warlock advised. The laidly worm lived on the milk of the seven kine, and the country was troubled no longer. But when Child Wind heard the news, he swore a mighty oath to rescue his sister and revenge her on her cruel stepmother. And three and thirty of his men took the oath with him. Then they set to work and built a long ship, and its keel they made of the rowan tree. And when all was ready, they out with their oars and pulled sheer for Bamborough Keep. But as they got near the keep, the stepmother felt by her magic power that something was being wrought against her. So she summoned her familiar imps and said, Child wind is coming over the seas. He must never land. Raise storms or bore the hull, but no how must he touch shore. Then the imps went forth to meet child wind's ship. But when they got near, they found they had no power over the ship, for its keel was made of the rowan tree. So back they came to the queen witch who knew not what to do. She ordered her men at arms to resist child wind, if he should land near them, and by her spells she caused the laidly worm to wait by the entrance of the harbour. As the ship came near, the worm unfolded its coils, and dipping into the sea, caught hold of the ship of child wind, 
and banged it off the shore. Three times Child Wind urged his men on to row bravely and strong, but each time the laidly worm kept it off the shore. Then Child Wind ordered the ship to be put about, and the witch queen thought he had given up the attempt. But instead of that, he only rounded the next point and landed safe and sound in Budel Creek, and then, with sword drawn and bow bent, rushed up followed by his men to fight the terrible worm that had kept him from landing. But the moment Child Wind had landed, the witch queen's power over the laidly worm had gone, and she went back to her bower all alone, not an imp nor a man at arms to help her, for she knew her hour was come. So when Child Wind came rushing up to the laidly worm, it made no attempt to stop him or hurt him. But just as he was going to raise his sword to slay it, the voice of his own sister Margaret came from its drawers, saying, "'Oh, quit your sword, unbend your bow, and give me kisses three, for though I am a poisonous worm, no harm I'll do to thee.' Child Wind stayed his hand, but he did not know what to think if some witchery were not in it. Then said the laidly worm again, "'Oh, quit your sword, unbend your bow, and give me kisses three. "'If I'm not one ye a set of sun, one never shall I be.' "'Then Child Wind went up to the laidly worm and kissed it once, "'but no change came over it. "'Then Child Wind kissed it once more, but yet no change came over it. "'For a third time he kissed the loathsome thing, "'and with a hiss and a roar the laidly worm reared back "'and before Child Wind stood his sister Margaret.' He wrapped his cloak about her, and then went up to the castle with her. When he reached the keep, he went off to the witch queen's bower, and when he saw her, he touched her with a twig of a rowan tree. No sooner had he touched her than she shriveled up and shriveled up, till she became a huge, ugly toad, with bold, staring eyes and a horrible hiss. She croaked and she hissed, and then hopped away down the castle steps, and Child Wind took his father's place as king, and they all lived happy afterwards. But to this day the loathsome toad is seen at times, haunting the neighbourhood of Bambara Keep, and the wicked witch queen is a laidly toad. End of chapter 33 The Laidly Worm of Spindleston Hugh